بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف Alhamdulillah, we have tawfiq to have some reflections on du'ai joshan kabir The way we are going to have these reflections is based on some themes. So I'm going to choose a theme and then see what has been mentioned in du'a about that theme. We had a few reflections, you know, on Du'ai Joshan, but unfortunately in English we never had chance to go through whole of it. In Farsi, Alhamdulillah, for three successive months of Ramadan, we had everyday reflection on Du'ai Joshan. So we have 98 lectures, mashallah, on Du'ai Joshan in Farsi. It's amazing. and. In English, we never had chance to go through details. I thought because we have only three sessions, maybe I just give you a taste, but not a starting from beginning, based on some topics. Before we go to the dua, just as a reminder, you know that this dua is taught by Jibra'il, to the Prophet. Imam Sajjad alayhi salam has you know mentioned this dua that in one of the battles when the Prophet was you know uh, annoyed by the heat and the heavy armor Jibra'il came and said God sent you salam and says remove this armor and make this dua which is for you and your ummah aman protection so it is known also as dua for aman uh, one of our very great scholars is allamiy bahrul ulum he was very spiritual he is someone that Ulama believe that he was able to meet Imam Zaman, Sayyid Bahrul Ulum. He has a book of poetry about fiqh. He has made fiqh into poem. And in his book, he says, Vasunna an yuktaba bil akfani. Shahadatul Islam wal Imani. He says it is mustahab, it's sunnah to write on your kafan shahadatain and uh, shahada for wilaya. Waha kaza kitabatul Qurani. Also to write some, you know, Quran. Wal joshan al man'ut bil amani. And also Dua Joshan, which is described as Aman. This Dua is for Aman, for protection. So, you know, they write it also on Kafan, this Dua. In some books of Dua, like Baladul Amin, Misbah, Shaykh Kaf Ami, who has authored these two books, has mentioned. Allama Majlisi has mentioned this, Sheikh Abbas Qumin Mafati has mentioned this. And what we find is that uh, if someone recites this three times in the months of Ramadan, Allah will make it haram for fire to burn, to touch this person. It's aman from, and also will be given uh, 
risk sustenance and 70,000 angels would do tasbih on his behalf. So you will be given the reward of what angels do on your behalf. So, sorry, if you recite it in the beginning of Ramadan, your risk will increase and 70,000 angels will do tasbih for you. If you do it three times in the month of Ramadan, fire will be uh, banned, heaven become necessary, and two angels will be commissioned to keep you away from sins. Imam Hussein salam also says that my father Ali ibn Abi Talib asked me uh, uh, to appreciate this dua and to write this dua on his kafan and to teach my family and encourage them. Imam Hussein says that my father taught me this. In some places also I found something very beautiful. Uh, I don't know in your you know communities uh, do you have such things or not. Unfortunately in big cities we don't have it anymore in Iran I haven't heard but in uh, smaller cities and provinces uh, I found very beautiful things that uh, people you know uh, did and maybe uh, still are doing. In Iran, normally what they do is in uh, Laylatul Qadr, 19th, 21st, and 23rd, they recite Dua Joshan. Allah Majlis says that it's good for Knights of Qadr. But in some places, they have something uh, special. For example, uh, in some places in Iran, like Saqqiz, Saqqiz, is a place uh, that is in western Iran. So they bring a rope, a, a cotton rope, white, which has been made by a, a virgin girl who was not married. And when they recite to Ayah Joshan, after each part, each article, they make one tie. And they believe that this is a protection from bad eye. And then they put it on the neck of their children. They believe that when dua is recited and after each you know, paragraph, they make a tie, it helps. In province of Semnan, they call it Nache Sadband means the thread with 100 ties. And they use this, so for every part they make a tie, then they say this is good for goshayesh, for you know, delivery of problems, and for women, uh, girls to marry. They you know, do this. They keep it inside Quran. In Shahrud, ladies, when they read Dua Joshan, so they have a container of water with saffron, and after each article, they blow into that water, and then they believe that it is blessed, and they take water with them. Some people, what they do, they bring some uh, candies, nabat or nogl, or sh cubic sugar, and when they say al ghawth al ghawth they blow, and then they say this is blessed. It's amazing that how over centuries, people have been so much attached to this dua. But uh, in uh, Tehran, you know, and Qom, I have not seen this thing, but it seems that in some places which are more cultural, yes? This, this was a practice I grew up in. Oh, really? Ah. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it still happens here, uh -huh. but I definitely remember my dad used to make those uh, black ropes. Uh -huh. He was very good at that. And people used to come to him and say, make them. 
for us. And, and then during the month of that junction with the bills, then they like a curved knife, people would then do it hundred notes. Oh. And then you would tie it around, especially children. Beautiful. Yeah, we, I grew up with it. That's amazing. <coughs> because it m brings it to your life, you know? Because you read and go, but this makes you feel it's part of your life, you know? So, yeah. Interesting. Okay, so let us start our reflections. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In Dua'ya Joshan, as you know, we have hundred like paragraphs. In each paragraph, we have normally ten names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? But in one paragraph, we have 11. So altogether, it's 1001. Article 55 has 11. But others have 10. Sometimes you see a concept is expressed in different ways or even similar ways in different articles because the idea is you want to make like an armor like a net a protection so you bring something next to something then another time next to something else and you know uh, fasten these concepts with each other horizontally, vertically, you know, like you are making a carpet. So everything is well connected with the rest and becomes a net for protection. So the one that I want to reflect on, which is very helpful, inshallah, for our spirituality, is emphasis on the fact that Allah is hearing. Okay? Because sometimes you may wonder, does Allah hear all the du'as that we make? Does He bother about our du'as? Although we know that, you know, Allah says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. But maybe it has not settled in our heart. So I have chosen all those names in this du'a from beginning to the end which relate to hearing us, that Allah is hearing us. So that inshallah it would leave no doubt or no kind of uh, ambiguity. Maybe I have missed something. I try to go from beginning to the end carefully but I don't say I didn't miss anything, but these are the ones that I have noted. In Article 2, Ya Mujibat Da'wat, O oh, the one who responds to the calls, to the du'as, Mujib. Mujib comes from Ejaba. Yeah? But it is an adjective, so we don't say, oh, the one who responds. We say, oh, responder. It means it's a habit. You are the one who is known, who is described as someone who responds to the calls. Ya mujibat da'awat. He responds to all the calls. In the same article, we have, ya mu'ti al-mas'alat. Oh, the giver of what people ask. Mas'ala comes from su'al. Su'al sometimes means ask question, but sometimes means to ask for something. Yeah, sa'il can be a person who asks question, 
or can be a person who asks for help. Sa'il here doesn't mean the one who asks questions, it means someone who asks for help. So, Allah is Mu'ti al Mas'alat. He is known, He is described by being someone who gives the requests of people. He is not the one that is ignoring or may respond, may not respond. He is the one that always responds. If he doesn't respond, that must be exception. Either he has responded, you didn't understand, or maybe there was an obstacle. Okay? Otherwise, his habit, his nature is to give. Also, Ya Sami Al Aswat. Oh, the listener to the voices. No matter which language you speak, no matter whether you are a child, a, a teenager, a young person, old person, any voice he hears. Then in Article 7, Ya Sami'a Shakaya. Oh, the listener to the complaints. When you have a problem and you complain to Allah about that problem, you say, Oh Allah, for example, I have illness, I don't know, my son is my daughter, my mother, my father, I don't know, is ill. People are not kind. Whatever complaint you want to make, you always want someone to listen to you and understand you, yeah? You, it helps you if someone understands you. Why you don't take this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He is Sami or Shakaya. The one who listens, his nature is to listen to these complaints. Okay? Article 9. Ya Sami. One of the names of Allah is Sami'. He is listener. Article 14. Ya mujib da'wat al mustarin. You know, we say, Amman yujib al mustarra iza. O oh, the one who responds to the call of those who are desperate. He, he answers all calls, but in a special way, in a more, you know, urgent way, he responds to the call of those who are desperate. You know, if, for example, you want to treat people with priorities for example you see who are the people that can maybe solve their problems they need to wait who are the people who are desperate and if you don't solve their problem now it may become too late so you prioritize ya mujib da'watil mutharrin so when you are desperate it is a good time actually because when you are not desperate, still you have to do something. You have to bring your part. But if you have done everything and there is nothing else you can do, that's the time that only Allah can solve the problem. So now it's His responsibility. Yeah? I have done everything. In the same article, we have two things that relate to this listening one is ya ghiyath al mustaghithin the other is ya sarikh al mustasrikhin because this is also a matter of listening mustaghith is someone who asks for help mustasrikh is someone who screams because there is pain and problem again he needs attention and help so Allah is 
غیاث آف مستقیثین این دعای کمیل آلسو بیسته یا غیاث ال مستقیثین یا سریخ ال مستسرخین یا مجی و دعوت ال مستقیثین دیس تری آر این فورتین دن این توینتی تو یا صاحب کل نجوا Any whispering Najwa means when you speak to the ear of someone yeah? Whispering Any whispering Allah is the companion So means he's hearing You don't need to call him out Even if you whisper He hears Ya sahiba kull najwa Every whisper he hears Ya muntaha kull shakwa Every complaint finally reaches him Like for example Sometimes you know when you complain about something It should reach the chief judge Or the I don't know the head of the state Every complaint finally reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He is not going to shift it to someone else <laughs> yeah? He is going to deal with your complaint 24 is related It's not act, uh, directly about listening but it's related Ya Rahim al Abarat O the one who is merciful with the tears Yeah So when you shed tears He is understanding Normally this comes with listening Because when you you know, shed tears, normally you also speak But it can be also without speaking Twenty-seven In article twenty-seven we have Ya asma'a sami'in The most hearing one Who listens to you very well? If I ask you each of you personally, who listens to you the best? Maybe you say my mother Or someone maybe say my, you know, daughter My husband, I don't know, anyone maybe has one person that listens better Or maybe two people, for example These are the people that you can always talk to, talk to them They listen to you, they love you They don't misjudge you, okay? But know that Allah is Asma'u Sami'in He is even better than this person And people like this person Okay? So no one can resemble him Sheikh, can I stop you there for a second? Sure Why is it that we... Why, what is it in the human nature? I, I didn't, I've never seen Josh and John like this before thematic But the Quran we've seen it done thematic Not Josh, number one so seeing hearing, literally in the first quarter, I'm sure there's always going to be more. Allah keeps reassuring us that I'm here, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening, and throughout this whole thing. Why is it that we will doubt whether he's actually here or not here? He's there. It's it's us who are, but I know I'm already kind of, but yeah, answering my own question <laughs> as well. Yeah. But what, what, what is it in the human nature that will keep doubting whether God is here or is listening really or not? Because, you know, we are unfortunately very much into, uh, you know, things which are uh, possible to physically sense, yeah? So you, you prefer something that you can see, you can maybe touch. Sometimes, you know, we think that a human being with all the limitations can make me get rid of my loneliness. But we don't appreciate that Allah is with us Because we are very much attached to dunya and to empiricistic, you know, kind of life Everything is either what I see with the eyes or smell or taste, yeah? Even uh, Allah says about Bani Israel That as soon as they crossed the sea 
they saw there are some idol worshippers who have a statues. They said to Musa, they saw the miracle, but then they say, Ej'allana ilahan kama lahum aleha. They said, it's interesting that they have something that they can touch, a God that they can touch. So they said to Musa, uh, make for us one God, one idol. They have several. Aleha, <laughs> give us one. So they try to be satisfied with one idol. They thought this is going to solve the problem. <laughs> but anyway, this is the uh, wrong attitude of human beings who are attached to materialistic life, physical life. That they want a God that they can see, they can touch, they can smell. Okay? But we say this is not God. This is a, a, you know, a creation of yourself. You have to raise your level of awareness so that you can connect to someone that you cannot see. But he's present more than anyone else. You cannot touch, but you can experience his love. You can experience that he is hugging you. Yeah? He's embracing you. So this du'a, if we read and repeat and reflect, then should leave no doubt in us that He is always available for us. He is always listening to us. In Article 30, we have Ya Sarikha Man in the previous one, you know, we had Sarikh al Mustasrikhin. But here we have Ya Sarikh man Meaning, oh, the one who answers to the cry of someone who is crying out or screaming. It's very similar. Mustasrikhin or Manistas. Ya Mughitha man The helper of the one who asks for help. Then 39. Ya khayr al mas'ulin. The best person who has ever been asked. Imagine the best person that, you know, when you ask, is always kind, generous, caring. Never, you know, says that I have done great things for you, you know. Never mentions, for example, if you ask something privately, you know, never says to others that I have helped this person, etc. The best person that you ever ask, who is that person? Allah is even better than that person. The best person that has ever been asked for anything. Ya khayr al masulin. Also, Ya khayr al mad'uvin, the best person who has ever been called. For a person who is called, if he is quick, if he is efficient, if he doesn't, you know, uh, oblige you, these are good qualities, yeah? To be quick, to be efficient, not to do menna on you. And Allah has all these qualities. And sometimes also people don't know. They want to help you, but they don't know how to help. He has the knowledge, he has the power. 41. You remember we had Ya Sahiba Kulla Najwa before. Here we have Ya Man Yasma'un Najwa. Oh, the one who listens to Najwa. So when you whisper, he listens carefully. 44. Ya Mujib. We had Ya Mujib Adawat al Mustarin. But here, Ya Mujib. Oh, the one who responds, the responder. 
51. Ya ni'mal mujib. What a good responder. Ya ni'mal mujib. Fifty-nine, again, ya mughis, but instead of ya qiyas al-mustaqisin, here say ya mughis man la mughis Allah. Oh, the one who goes to help someone who has no other helper. Okay, no one is able to help you, or no one is available to help you, but he is there. Sixty-three. Ya man ya'lam murad al-muridin. Oh, the one who knows what people are asking, what they want, what is their request, what they are demanding. There are people that you have to repeat many times so that they understand what you want. But Allah knows maybe even you yourself don't know what you want. You know, you lack, something is lacking. Sometimes you don't know what is lacking. So he's the one that knows what you want. Ya man ya'lamu dhamir as Oh, the one who knows what is in the heart of people who are silent. There are people that... So, يَا مَنْ يَعْلَمُ ذَمِيرَ الصَّامِتِينَ يَا مَنْ يَسْمَعُ أَنِينَ الْوَاهِنِينَ Oh, the one who hears the cry of those who are weak, those who are tired and weak. Yeah, sometimes they, they cannot even scream. You know, problems sometimes are sudden and you scream but sometimes they have been for a long time now you cannot even you know, <laughs> scream so you are quietly showing your pain he hears that as well 64 ya sami'ad dua oh the one who listens dua any call any prayer Sixty-nine. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismik. You know that Allahumma inni as'aluka bismik repeats in du'ai joshan. Yeah? All together there are twenty-five. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismik. Then after that we say some of the names of Allah here in sixty-nine. Allahumma inni as'aluka bismik. So this is the name of Allah. Ya Sami'ah. The first name is Sami'ah. Like we had Sami'ah and we have Sami'ah. Sami'ah means the one who is hearing very well and uh, continuously. Number 86. Ya akrama mas'ulen su'il. Ya akrama mas'ulen su'il. Oh, the most honorable, the most generous person that has ever been asked. Okay? We had that he is the best one who has been asked. He said he is Akram. Akram from Karam. Means he is the most honorable, the most generous person that has ever been asked. 87. 
یا انیس از ذاکرین As soon as you remember him He is with you And give you company and acquaintance You know we have a beautiful hadith Musa alayhi salam ask Allah Oh Allah Are you far so that I call you Or you are near so that I whisper <coughs> Okay He said Abba'intun anta fa'unadik Or qareebun anta fa'unadik Allah said Ana jalisu man zakarani I am sitting next to someone who remembers me Even if you don't say anything Just remember me I am with you Here also we say Ya anisa zakirin Whoever remembers Allah Allah is anis Means he's like companion Who gives acquaintance with you Doesn't let you to be lonely Ninety-five. Ya khaira zakirin wa madkur. He is the best person in remembering and the best person who is remembered. You know, Quran says, "Odkuruni az korkum." Remember me, I remember you. Yeah. Sometimes you remember someone, but they don't remember you. Or they remember you, they cannot do anything. Allah is the best person who remembers you. He remembered you so that you can remember him. Actually, he's the first person to take the initiative. Uh, it is said that a person was, you know, calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, Ya Allah. And shaitan said, you know, you shouldn't call him anymore because he doesn't answer. So shaitan managed to bring doubt to him and said, how many days you have calling Allah? He didn't answer. So he started, you know, doubting and stopped. Then he heard the call that when you were saying, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, that was my labbaik. I was accepting before you said it and this is why you were able to call me you know sometimes we say for example you know oh Allah accept my ziyara but sometimes we say oh Allah thank you for letting me go for ziyara because without him you were not able to go for ziyara yeah <laughs> so he helps us to remember him and then he says if you remember me i remember you means i will have favor upon you so he's the best one to remember and be remembered then in the same 95 you are the best person who calls and is called he calls us for example quran says يا أيها الذين آمنوا استجيبوا لله بل الرسول إذا دعاكم لما يحيكم الله calls us to give us life we should answer we should say لبيك also he is called by us يا خير مجيب ومجاب he is the best person who answers and the best person that we should answer if you want to answer to anyone's call or request, why you don't answer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yeah, there are people that you say, you, I should never say no to them. Why then you don't say the same thing to Allah? So I shouldn't say no to Allah. Number 96. Ya man huwa man da'ahu mujib. Oh, the one for who for those who call him is responding. Respond to those who call him. 99 Ya man la yashkaluhu sam'un and sam'ah Oh the one that listening to someone would not make him busy so that he cannot understand another one Becomes you know too busy with someone Because 
if few people talk to us at the same time, we cannot understand. But Allah is not like this. La yashqalu sam'un and sama. If all people call him at once, he can listen to each of them separately. As we say, la yashqalu shanun and shan. Nothing makes him busy so that he doesn't. Ya man la yulhihe qawlun an qawl. Oh, the one that no word makes him distracted from another word. If I say something to Allah, you say something to Allah, someone else says something to Allah, our words would not distract him, would not you know, make him busy. Also, Ya man la yubremuhu ilhahul mulahin. Many people don't like insisting on something. Yeah? If you ask them for something, once, twice, maybe they say, okay. But if you keep asking, many people don't like. Say, why are you insisting so much? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and those who are, you know, godly people, they are different. Allah loves people who insist. Yeah? Because this shows you appreciate. Sometimes a good teacher may not accept to teach. You have to go again. And Ayatollah Hassan Zada says that even for some of his teachers, he cried in front of them to accept to teach him. So Allah is the one that when people do Elha, he doesn't get bored or you know upset. Actually, he loves people to insist. So these are the uh, names of Allah in Dua Yajoshana Kabir that relate to Allah being someone that not only he listens to us, but he's the best listener. He is the kindest one, the most understanding one, the most helpful one, the one who would not, you know, take you wrong. The one, the one who, you know, would not say, how many times you are talking to me? You know, how much you repeat, how much you come? Actually, if you go more and more, he loves better. I hope, inshallah, we manage to absorb this with our heart, inshallah, and always know that he is there, <coughs> available and indeed waiting for us to talk to him. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Yes. I had a question. You know, you, you emphasize a lot on um, how he's there to listen to us. And then the world that we live in right now, everything, the solution to everything is talking about things. You, you talk to a friend or, you know, counseling and therapy is such a big thing. Is that a good thing or not? Because Obviously, talking is almost like a medicine. So, do we use that like doctors? Like, you know, you go to a doctor and tell them your problem and they give you a medicine. So, is talking to people, either friends, family, or professionals, is that a medicine or is that something that actually is just reserved for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like, we only should be telling him um, problems or, you know, things that are used within us. You know, having conversation with people is good. But if you have problems and issues, then you have to be careful not talking about your problems to everyone. Okay? Amir al Mu'minin says, Raziya bezul man kashafa an If you disclose your problems to people, then you should. Expect that they may humiliate you. Okay? They may lower their attention to you. Unless they are good people, people of understanding. So it's better that you have conversation with good people about different things. But if you have some issues, very personal issues, don't share it with every friend or you know every person. 
first of all, share it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you feel that Allah wants to talk to a therapist, to a mentor, to a wise, I don't know, relative, if you think that this is what Allah wants, then just talk to that person or that kind of person and also share the minimum, whatever is necessary, not more than necessary. If it's enough to say it in five minutes, don't make it one hour. You know, keep it to the minimum, just for the sake of getting advice. Because sometimes when we have problem, we want to talk to everyone. And this actually is not helping us mentally and also can create social problems for us. Because some people, when they know you have this problem, then they treat you in a different way. Maybe not immediately, but in the long term. Uh, so you have to share it with the people who are able to help and are able to maintain healthy relation with you. But with Allah, no. If you can say in five minutes, say it in one hour. <laughs> the Quran says that Allah asked Musa, What is in your hand? He said, Hiya Asaya. This is my stick. He could just say, Hiya Asaya. But he said, Atawakkau alayha wa ahushu biha ala ghanami wa liyafiha ma'arib ukhra. He said, this is what I can rely on, lean on. I can drop leaves for my animals. And I have other benefits. So they say, he wanted to prolong conversation with Allah. This is amazing. Any question? Okay. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.